Just ahead on American Black Journal, the annual Ford Freedom Award celebrates the contributions of African American men. We'll get the details on this year's event, plus a Detroit program that uses yoga to teach kids about good health and nutrition. American Black Journal starts now. At DTE Energy, we believe that we have a greater responsibility. We believe that being part of a community means being involved in the fabric of that community, investing time, effort, and resources in the communities we serve. DTE Energy Foundation is a proud sponsor of American Black Journal. Welcome to American Black Journal, I'm Stephen Henderson. The contributions of African American men will be front and center at this year's Ford Freedom Award celebration. The event is put on by the Ford Motor Company and it benefits the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. This year's theme centers on men of courage. Honorees include the late business mogul and philanthropist Reginald Lewis, NBA legend and former Detroit Mayor Dave Bing, and best-selling author Shaka Senghor. Grammy Award-winning artist Usher and NFL Hall of Famer Jerome Bettis will serve as presenters. And entertainers include Angie Stone and Dougie Fresh. It promises to be a star-studded event celebrating the achievements of a diverse group of African-American men. Joining me now is the museum's president and CEO, Juanita Moore, along with Vice President Lanisha DeBartle-Laban. Welcome back to American Black Journal. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Boy, that's a that's a that's a really impressive lineup there. Uh, <laughs> Reginald really Lewis, exciting. Dave Bing. Yes. Uh, yeah. So talk about uh, talk about this year's event. Well, this year's event is, is really very special because it allows us to honor men of courage. And men of courage is you know it's a great theme for the Ford Freedom Award, but it's also a national program that Ford has launched. And so to be able to combine the two for Ford Freedom Awards is really great for us, and yeah. we're really excited about it. And to get to honor you know people right here in Detroit, including. Mayor Day Bing and Chaka Senghor. Yeah. So, um, and Chaka Senghor, by the way, his award uh, was was really he was nominated by People. It was, oh, a, was that right? It, it was, was online. Uh, yes, oh, really? it was an online piece. So it was Talk a some about Chaka. I've, I've had Chaka on the show, and of course, I've seen him on Oprah and the, the other things he's getting attention for. But not, maybe not everybody knows uh, who he is. He's got this wonderful, inspiring story. Oh, absolutely. He's a wonderful young man that's grown which we all hope to do, to yeah. continue to grow. Unfortunately, you know, he had the the, the number of years when he was very young. Yeah. He had committed murder and ended up spending an, a, 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 a long, time long in prison. part of his life in prison. But uh, didn't just waste that time. Use that opportunity to grow himself and to really committed to come back to Detroit yeah. to help change the lives of people in Detroit. And I, I heard him say that, you know, most of the time he spent in prison was outside of Detroit in communities where he had not committed the wrong. Right. So right. he felt it was, you know, now he's coming back to and come back into this community where he committed the wrong to really change the lives and make up for it in yeah. community service. Yeah. Yeah. No, is is one of the more inspirational stories you see around uh, right now. Uh, talk about how this uh, benefits the museum. Well, the museum benefits tremendously. This is the 18th annual Ford Freedom Award, so it's a partnership with the Ford Motor Company that has been long-standing and that, that benefits the museum in many ways. It makes us visible. It of course installs that wonderful name in our ring of genealogy <laughs> right. that people love to come and see all those names are such an inspiration because they're trailblazers they were uh, they made tremendous sacrifices and so we're excited about the name that will be installed Reginald Lewis this year yeah, yeah. there's a museum named by him named for, uh, him, for in him in Baltimore yes. yeah no I, I lived there for a long time so I remember yeah. I remember that museum talk about uh, who Reginald was though and why you're honoring well him. Reginald Lewis was uh, a Philanthropist. He was a Wall Street um, uh, financier, but he was also a, a trained law, a Harvard lawyer who really worked very hard as an entrepreneur to create a business. He made a very shrewd business deal to sort of get him started. He yeah. he bought McCall Patterns and ended up for uh, for a million dollars and sold it for ninety five million dollars. I mean, <laughs> who wouldn't want to do that? Small profit. <laughs> yes, <right? laughs> but he didn't just make money for himself. Right. He was yeah. a great philanthropist and really you know supported a lot of causes. And unfortunately, died very young. Yes. And uh, 
uh, but his legacy lives on and we wanted to honor that. We wanted to honor the art entrepreneurial spirit. We wanted to honor the fact that he was a philanthropist and he sought to give back. And as I said, the museum is named for him, which of course is an African American museum that In wants Baltimore, to tell the yeah. stories of the lives of African Americans as we do. So we saw it as a very fitting thing to do to put it, place him in the ring of genealogy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk about other things going on at the museum. I know it's, it's such a vibrant place. There's always something new fun, fun. happening. Uh, you're saying goodbye to one exhibit while welcoming another one in. Yes, you know, Boundaries exhibit is leaving. Um, it was the, in fact, this hasn't left yet, so up to May 15th. You can still go see you it. You still have time to go see it. Uh, it's Aboriginal art. It's beautiful, beautiful work. And we will be saying hello to an, an, an exhibit on the Olympics. You know, we have the Olympics this summer. Some Olympics right. are coming up in Brazil. So uh, we want to really look at the, the, the Olympics from an artistic point of view. So we are, you know, we're looking at the work of a number of artists. Each year, the, um, the Olympics have the official artists. And Jacob Lawrence was an official right. uh, artist for right. the Olympics. And so we have the work of a number of artists who were a lip. Uh, official Olympic artists. We have their work that will be on display. We also have work from former Olympians, Olympians themselves, themselves yeah. who that will be included in the show. Yeah, uh, talk about some of uh, so talk about some of that. So yeah, we're really excited about that exhibition coming up, and then some other activities that are coming up this summer as well. Uh -huh. We will be unveiling uh, a sculpture by Charles McGee, "United We Stand," oh. in July, and we're so excited about Where that. Where is the piece. sculpture going? Right on our ground. Right out, out, outside. Yes. It's oh, very nice. Beautiful. It is. <clears throat> uh, 20 by 40 feet sculpture. Um, and it, it will be unveiled on the weekend of to commemorate the uprising in Detroit. Okay. So in July. And that will be sort of the first big kickoff program for us. And you know, Charles McGee is amazing. He was sure. a Kresge eminent artist yeah. and 92 years old. <laughs> and this, this is his last large sculpture piece. So we're really huh. excited to have that. And to, you know, to have us kick off the whole theme of the uprising with the sculpture entitled United We Stand is also important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I was going to ask you guys about uh, that, that anniversary coming up next year, <clears throat> 50 years since yes. uh, since the uprising here in, in the city, I, I would imagine the museum is, of course, playing a huge role in the commemoration mm -hmm. of that. Absolutely, we're partnering with uh, the Historical, the Historical Museum, Museum as sure. course, along with in what probably another hundred other partners throughout this uh, the city of Detroit, and we are really excited. We will be opening two exhibits for that, and of course, our first kickoff piece would be the unveiling of the sculpture and a number of programs along the way. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about uh, we we skipped over him. Dave Bing is also yes. <laughs> one of your men of courage, as you say. He would be <laughs> sending me a nasty note if uh, if I didn't come back, make a circle back, and no, he's very talk humble. He would. No, I know, I know. I'm but, but we should not skip over <laughs> right. him yeah. because it is, you know, I, I think the work that he's doing with young men is really very, very yeah. important. And I, that's what I was going to say. I would imagine it's for this program that he has, this mentoring well, program, which really is taken off. This is the most public off. piece, but if you go back and check his history there, we were just involved in a conversation the other day where someone told a story about him, the fact that they were at this place and they were, you know, they were giving away free bikes and there were more children there than there were bikes. Yeah. And that Dave being quietly went up well, and I'm wrote a sure check. That they yeah, but didn't bike. say a word <laughs> right. to anybody. Nobody ever knew yeah. that he bought the remainder of the bikes personally for, for the students yeah. and for the young people. And I mean, I, having dealt with him and worked with him, he is very much that quiet kind of person and he he does a number of things that people never know about. And But his work right now with young boys in this mentorship program is really important. I heard this young man talk about the fact he walked up and, you know, and introduced himself. Uh -huh. Remember me? You know, you really inspired me to really go on to school and now I'm doing this job and right. so I think that oftentimes we don't know how many people how we inspire people, but the you know the, yeah. the work. But that he they, does it every day, every single day. Yeah, and and as you because point out, he could be doing something else in a really quiet way. I mean, it's not somebody out looking for publicity right. or notoriety because of it. And um, that, that's yeah, why we're ahead. so excited that he is our Ford Freedom Scholar. He's going to be the inspirational speaker for the students that come. We'll see over a thousand students on Ford Freedom Day, uh, and they will get a motivational talk by Dave Bay. Yeah, yeah. uh, some of the students have competed for scholarships totaling over $10,000. So the Ford Freedom Award program really benefits the community in tremendous ways. Yeah. Yeah. And Ford, Ford does that. They do, they've been a great partner with the museum, and uh, and I, I mean, I, I really, really appreciate all that they do to help our programming. To really, uh, and this, the, 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 you talk about the essay contest with the students. Uh, right, right. Ah, 
I, I really, you have to come. Honestly, come and, uh, you have the... to. Th they, these were the these kids were amazing. They talked about they they talked about men of courage, especially in the African American community. And they're yeah. not you know they're not all African American students. Right. They're you know they're they're, right. they're from all over the state. That how they encourage and inspire them, and they many times they compare them to their father sure. or journeys uh, yeah. at things that happened in their own lives. It's it really some of the best written written. Uh, essays that we've had. Oh, that's uh, it's ever wonderful. I so you have to come. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Ford Freedom Awards, and of course the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American and History. Thank you guys very much for being here, and congratulations. Thank, Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Coming up next on American Black Journal, a different approach to preventing stress and obesity in children. But first, here's a look at some important moments in Detroit's Black history. I'm Ken Coleman with a look back at African American life in Detroit. This week in 1979, Danielle Luna died of an accidental drug overdose. She was the first black woman to grace the cover of Vogue magazine. In 1959, Dr. DeWitt Burton was sworn in as a member of the Wayne State University Board of Governors. He was the first black man in Michigan to serve in the post. And in 1971, Marvin Gaye's What's Going On was released by Motown Records. Talk to me. So you can see oh, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on, yeah, what's going on, what's going on, oh, what's going on, what's going on. These are significant events this week in Detroit's Black History, taken from the book On This Day, African American Life in Detroit. All right, we all know about the importance of exercise in maintaining a healthy lifestyle, and it's even more important for children and teens to get regular exercise to combat obesity, reduce anxiety, and improve self-esteem. The Daniel Carmanos Work It Out program uses a yoga-based approach to teach kids how to have a healthy body, mind, and spirit. Take a look. Danielle Carmanis Work It Out is a 10-week yoga and nutrition-based program that equips children in Detroit with the tools kids need to reduce anxiety, prevent obesity, and increase self-esteem. Today, adults and children are dealing with a consistent barrage of daily stressors. Unfortunately, our kids are very stressed. The expectations from school, from parents, from friends. Um, and as adults, I think we forget that. One thing that's really important about this program is that it makes a real difference in kids' lives. When I'm having a rough day, I do yoga so I can feel good and forget about all the bad stuff that happened in my day. Violence, bullying, and even current events can have a profound effect on our children's sense of security and inner peace. In their everyday life, yoga can help them become less reactive. A lot of times, people end up in bad situations because they're just being really reactive. And by practicing yoga, they're learning these breathing techniques and these postures to get them to just relax be more patient, and in doing so, they're less reactive. I think this is an excellent tool for kids to manage stress. The breathing ball is a great tool to help kids connect to the breath, which is the main tool to connect in yoga. The breathing is the tool that connects you to the present moment. It not only makes your mind calmer, but it makes it sharper so that we can start to realign ourselves, refocus ourselves. My favorite part of the class when we do all of our sun salutations and breathe and stuff and like get, get all of our bad stuff out and get our good stuff in. DKWIO empowers kids with meaningful tools to provide optimum health in mind, body, and spirit. 
The nutrition program highlights the importance of having a well-balanced meal, of incorporating all dietary components, your carbs, your grains, fruits, vegetables. The more they learn, the more they're willing to try new, healthier choices. I think it's good to start teaching them about their different options now, because as an adult, it's much harder to change your eating habits. Well, yeah, teach me not to eat like whole bags of chips, lots of greasy things, and try to eat fruit at least once a day. Each semester, students receive their own yoga mat, a nutrition and yoga workbook, and instruction each week from a committed, certified instructor. We strive to provide our students with engaging educational content every week. Adding the animal sounds and the call and response cheers have been really helpful because that gives the kids uh, some way to have fun with this practice and it makes it more accessible for them. With a dedicated team of volunteers, schools, and staff, we provide students with a safe, quiet, and focused environment to teach these skills. Skills that will not only enhance their performance in school, but have a profound and lasting impression on the rest of their lives. What I like about yoga is that yoga is challenging, it helps exercise your muscles, it helps you with your balance, it relieves stress, and it's just really fun. Gratitude is the best attitude. Gratitude is the best attitude. And your gratitude is the best attitude. Our measure of success comes from the feedback we receive from our students and how they use these tools and share them with family and friends outside of the classroom. Because of the generosity of all of our volunteers, corporate and community partners, we are able to reach out into this community and affect the lives of thousands of children in Detroit. I'm really thankful for it because like, it's like really cool. Everything. This is our chance to learn something we never learned. Well, I just want to thank you for your participation because of the donations we would not have, the yoga mats and the instructors that we have and all of the equipment that they use in our yoga class. And joining me now are two members of the Danielle Carmanos Work It Out team. Trish DeWald is Executive Director for Development and Communications, and Carrie Trahan is Program and Volunteer Coordinator and a Yoga Instructor. Both of you, welcome to American Black Journal. Thanks for having Thanks. us. Uh, Carrie, I'm going to start with you because while we were sitting watching the film, I said to you, hey, I can't do yoga. I'm not limber enough. And you said something back to me that I thought was really insightful. What was it? If you can breathe, you can do yoga. <laughs> if you can breathe, you can do yoga. That's a wonderful way to think about it. And that sort of points up that yoga is not just about physical activity. It's about all these other things. It's about Absolutely. your mind and your spirit and all these great things that uh, especially it's great to have kids doing. Yes. Yeah. It's actually really, um, people think of yoga as a physical exercise. Like you said, I'm yeah. not limber, but it's really a breathing exercise that connects the mind and body. And the practice, teaching kids how to breathe, teaches them how to self-regulate, help them with their homework, with just to calm down and relax. Yeah, just be a little more zen, right? <laughs> uh, I, I would imagine, though, that when you first get kids, little kids, uh, into a class like this, they're probably, a little, they're probably a little hesitant or skeptical like I was, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have really fun breathing games that we do with them to keep their attention on their breath. And again, teaching them those breathing techniques really gives them the tools and the opportunity to take a moment to just breathe and let go of whatever is outside of their control and just helping them realize that one thing that they can do in control is how they breathe. Is how they breathe, yeah. Uh, connecting this to schools, which is what uh, you guys are doing, obviously a really important uh, uh, outreach, especially in places like Detroit, where kids just don't have any other place to have this kind of outlet. A lot of them, you know, gym classes and things like that are less uh, 
prevalent than they used to be. So true, and, and Michigan is one of the few states in the nation that has no requirement for physical education. You know, there's a recommendation the state has, yeah. but you know, with so, you so many do demands it. on the time in the classroom activities, yeah. it, it's, it's one of the first things to be cut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, talk about where the idea for this uh, program comes from. Yeah, so our founder, Danielle Kermanis, um, she's a news junkie, and a little more than 10 years ago, she was you know, collecting the news for the day and reading about the really serious epidemic of childhood obesity. Yeah. And, you know, the childhood health is affected so much more negatively when kids are living in poverty. And as we know, our community is a, a high, a high, high number of, of kids living in poverty. And, you know, she said, gosh, Pete, somebody should do something about this. And like Pete Kermanis would do, said, okay, <laughs> go for it. Right, go ahead and do go it. Go right? for it. And so what was really, the, the foundation was really about giving kids the opportunity to move. And it was all sorts of different ways, dodgeball, dance, soccer, baseball. But what was interesting is that the kids really resonated with the yoga. Huh. Uh, kids, they responded. The to kids it. responded. Yeah. And, and I think that's really an important thing to know about our organization is that it's really led by the children. We're responding to their needs, to their opportunities, and to help them. And so when you've got third, fourth, and fifth graders saying, I want to be still, I want to be quiet, <laughs> right. you go with that. <laughs> right. You probably get a lot of parents who are enthused about that idea, right? That's right. right. And you know, we, we have young kids, right? When you say to your kids, take a deep breath. <sighs> Yeah, right. <laughs> but we're teaching kids really how to take slow that down moment, and slow down, and, and, and to be still for just a minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what do the kids tell you about what they're, what they're learning in the, in the classes? Uh, that they learn how to eat better, make better food choices, and also uh, it prevents them from getting into fights with their siblings. A lot of them will say, I took a deep breath before I reacted. I was really angry, <laughs> but I took a deep breath, and I felt better, and I realized I didn't have to do that, or I didn't have to eat that. So it makes an impact in their day-to-day -day choices. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, is, there, is there a way to sort of grow this, or is there a need to grow this beyond what you guys are doing? There's nobody that doesn't need yeah. what we're doing. You know, our biggest barrier right now is funding. Um, um, but, I, you know, that's why they brought me on board, is to find, just to find <laughs> the, money the money and to find the opportunity. <laughs> and, you know, I'm really proud of the fact that we received a nice grant from the Health Endowment Fund to yeah. take our program to 1,100 more kids in the upcoming year. Um, but, yeah, everybody needs it. Yeah. You know, we're looking at perhaps um, realigning our curriculum. Right now we're specifically with third, fourth, and fifth graders. We're looking at the opportunity to address children a little bit older, perhaps a little bit younger, um, but really there's nobody who doesn't yeah. need this. And there's wraparound with this too. I mean, it's not just uh, yoga sessions. You guys are talking to them about all these other issues. We're talking other to them issues. about pro-social behavior, how to, how to respond positively, how to take what they're learning in our sessions out into the real world, into their classrooms, into conflict with their friends and family members. Yeah. Um, and, and really importantly, talking to them about nutrition. Now we know our third graders aren't making the meals that they're eating, right. but kids can If they go no. home and start talking about uh, healthier eating, and, and as you point out, say no to things that, uh, that they shouldn't be right, eating. Right, like the little boy earlier, you know, I said no to an extra serving of potato chips. Right. And we, we, get, we give kids the tools to sort of flex their strength muscles. Strength is one of our sessions and we talk to the kids about what they can put into their body to make it strong, yeah. strong yoga poses, strong breathing exercises. But we ask the kids after that session to share a time that they flex their strength muscle. And I'll never forget one of the instructors came back and said two little kids said they said no to pop, but one little girl said no to a stranger. Oh, wow. That's powerful stuff. Yeah, yeah. One session, 45 minutes, Big deal, right? Well, what about the uh, what about the parents? Do they do they give you much feedback about what they're what they're seeing at home uh, once the kids are doing that? This empowers the kids to be vehicles of change in the community because they're encouraging their parents, as you said, to try yoga, try some of the recipes in our that we talk about in our nutrition portion of the program. So yeah, absolutely, the parents are now looking for yoga to do in the right. in Detroit. I was going to say maybe we need a work it out for adults That's right. <laughs> in, in, in Detroit to get the parents involved in something like this. Definitely. Yeah. What, what, what feedback are you getting from the schools about uh, the changes there? Well, I mean, more than ever, they need us in the schools. I mean, there's never been a school that said, no, thank you. Yeah, we don't need this. And, and for us, we come at, currently at no cost to the schools, so we're entirely funded by philanthropy. Yeah. 
Um, so the schools want us, they need us, they, they, they beg to have us back. Yeah. What, what, what happens in the summer uh, when the kids are gone? So we've school? partnered this year with um, Healthy Detroit and through a grant from Born and Raised Detroit we're able to provide our sessions for six weeks in the summertime at some of the new health, health parks. Oh very good, yeah. yeah. Well and I would imagine that there's maybe some meals involved in that too. We sure hope so. Yeah, yeah. You're getting kids eating healthy and doing all these things. All right, so maybe I gotta change my mind. Maybe I can breathe so that I can do yoga. You I gotta come out. We'll get you out for one kids. of the summer sessions. I'm certainly, my, I'm <laughs> certain that my kids will be better at it than I am, but uh, but this is a wonderful program. And well, thanks thank very you. much for doing it. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having us. All righty, that's our program for today. Thanks for watching. You can get more information about our guests at AmericanBlackJournal.org and be sure to tune in next week when we take this show on the road to the Detroit fly-in at City Airport. Meanwhile, connect with us on Facebook and on Twitter and listen to our program on WDET 1019 FM. We'll see you next time. At DTE Energy, we believe that we have a greater responsibility. We believe that being part of a community means being involved in the fabric of that community, investing time, effort, and resources in the communities we serve. DTE Energy Foundation is a proud sponsor of American Black Journal.